Travels of the Ellis Arbor is an audio narrative set in the world of Bastion using 5e compatible characters. A dark fantasy world with chaos, intrigue, magic, and mystery. The story, setting, and sounds are written by Lonomy and published by Lonomy Creative. Tune in for episode 15, Mercurial. As dust settled on the corner of Ironfoot Road, Darian and his crew, along with Killian and his gang, began to soak in the weight of the situation they now found themselves. At Carpathian's feet, the smouldering corpse of Mollesby, the older of two brothers, the cries of Mercurial, his younger brother, echoing far beyond the lane and into the square. The tension grew until it felt as if nary a wisp of breeze could burst into bloodshed. Killian shot a look at Mercurial, his eyes flashing a knowing, empathetic, yet urgent order. Darian looked upon the younger brother, his hand gripping the shaft of his weapon tighter and tighter. He could hear that wraps of its leather handle began to stretch, readying to plunge a knife into the nearest living vessel. And as the tension almost became too much for any to bear, the echoing, blaring eminence of a horn sounded out throughout the local township. Guards. The scuffle had clearly notified a few of their predicament, but the wailing, haunting cries of Mollesby it seemed, had drawn the attention of what sounded like half of the entire city guard. Metal clanking and heavy footfalls rang as the garrison approached the corner of Ironfoot Road. Breaking their silence, Killian was the first to speak, shouting orders to his remaining companions. Arvel, grab Mercurial and go. Boy, this isn't the end for your brother. We'll return for him. Now, get out! With a whip of his heavy cloak, the ranger known as Arvel, his gangly form reached toward Mollesby, shrouding him from both Darien and the remainder of the crew. In a flash of red light and a perfume of sulphur, the two were doused in an ethereal shadow before fading out of existence. And before any of them had a moment to respond, Killian turned his weapon in an arc toward the distracted and unfettered Edward. He slashed violently upward, carving through the left shoulder of his cloak and spraying crimson into the air. Do not think this is the end, you fiends. Blood for blood. This is the way of the world. And with the same brisk billowing of his own jacket, Killian began to cast a spell as his own form was shrouded in shadow. And as the crew rushed toward Edward's aid, Killian Bisk faded out of existence, shifting to an unknown and otherwise unseen place. Though, as the urgency of the situation began to weigh heavier, a deep wound in need of urgent care and the footfalls of guards approaching, the crew responded with practiced efficiency. Moore drew Ed in close, wrapping their arm around his shoulder and expelling a puff of yellowed, soft colour spores into the air. Their healing light began to dapple across the wound, preparing it to be knit together. In a frenzy, Newt began to gather a handful of spell components together, attempting to remove what evidence he could of any conflict. And to his dismay, there was little he could do to dispose of the lifeless, burned husk of Mollesby. Carpathian simply stood in place, dusting the ashen residue from his cape as he grimaced toward his prey, callous and unmoving. And Darian, with practiced acuity, turned his eyes to the nearby alleyways, looking for the means of their expeditious retreat. One after another, every side street and alley led to more twists and turns. They would be as likely to be lost to the labyrinth of back streets as they would to a contingent of armed guards. Though, after a series of back and forth searching, he heard a small, young voice begin to echo through the nearest alley to their position. A 
a small, downtrodden child, barely older than seven or eight years old, leaned into the alleyway, quietly. The child beckoned toward the crew. Come here, quick, don't let them see you. Do as the boy says, quickly. Leave what you can. Wizard. He shot what could only be a look of honest, violent contempt toward Carpathian. A stare that would wake even the most hardened veteran in a cold sweat. Make yourself useful and help Ed to his feet. Carry him. Barely a noise was uttered from Carpathian. With that same grimace, he hoisted Edward to his feet, gathering him by the arm and shuffled him toward the alleyway. All the while, the child continued to beckon them, hurriedly into the shadow of the corner building. Darkness cloaked the alleyway, like an alcove that was bathed in the darkness of night. And stepping off the road, their forms were concealed but a few feet deep. They hurried toward the back corner, behind a stack of broken crates and burlap sacks. Darian, who caught up to the child first, watched as he drew a handle from underneath a pile of wood scraps, and pulling it aloft, he revealed a trap door. One by one, the captain ushered Moore, Newt, and finally Ed through the open hatch, begging them to follow after the boy. But before Carpathian reached the hatch, Darian interceded. He drew his pistol with finesse and pressed the still hot barrel into the wizard's chest. The faint sizzle of a hot flash burned into the outer leather of Carpathian's vest. Why not survey your handiwork a moment longer? Perhaps the least you could do is cover our escape. The guards may be looking for a red devil that murdered a man in broad daylight. I'd rather not have that endanger my crew. Count to ten, and then, if it's safe, you can join us. If they find you, I care not whether you return. As his final word rested in the air, Carpathian flinched at the sound of a distinct and familiar cue click. The sound of a firearm's trigger being pulled. Though not coupled with a loud bang and a sharp pain, he looked down to see that the chamber in Darian's pistol was empty, with only the weight of lingering vengeance pierced into his flesh. And with a wily, malign grin, Carpathian scoffed and turned to do as his captain had ordered. Hurrying down the hatch, Darian joined his crew, meeting them at the bottom of a short stairwell. A pathway continued eastward, beyond the building they had passed as they cornered the road. Should they continue, they would be right below the Iron Foot Orphanage. The child, barely feet ahead of the crew, reached for a low hanging lantern, pulled it aloft, and shone a light down the narrow corridor. The tension of their fight still fresh in their minds, the crew pressed on, following closely behind the boy who had led them through the tunnel. It led for only a few feet more, before abruptly turning a corner and leading to a rickety ladder, propped against what appeared to be an out-of-use chimney flue. A glimmer of candlelight shining from a grate that loomed just above their heads. The child beckoned them up the ladder as he waited for each member to climb. Turning back toward the trapdoor, he whispered to Darian. Where is the red one? The one with fire and horns? Is he coming? I care not. Do not wait for him. Tell me, what awaits us up this ladder? A glimmer of a crooked smile shot across the boy's face. The light of the lantern showed a row of yellow teeth and a smudge of dirt across his nose. It's my room. If you're quiet, the mistress won't hear you either. Quickly, and don't make a sound. And so, Darian carefully lifted the grate from the floor above and revealed the interior of a quaint boarding room. 
an unkept bed with sheets strewed across the corner post. Dirty clothes and what appeared to be the remains of a meal were sat at the bedside. A musty exterior window dappled light across a third of the room. The captain carefully stepped round, helping Edward out of the hole in the ground, still clutching his arm and wincing in pain. One by one, they stepped into the small dormitory room, dusting themselves off and taking a seat on the floor of the darkened portion of the room. As he was certain that Ed, Newt and Moore were safe, Darian crept toward the open, dusty window. As light shone from the street outside, he glimpsed at the scene the boy was clearly privy to. A contingent of no less than a dozen guards, fully armed with weapons drawn, rushed down the road toward the west. They stopped for a brief moment to survey the corner, but continued in their pursuit. Well after the point that the conflict had occurred, and as the rushing crowd of guardsmen began to wane, Darien watched as all that was left were footprints, drawn in a thin layer of blackened ash. Strangely, the lifeless body of Mollesby had disappeared without a trace. Travels of the Ellis Arbor is made possible by the generous support of our subscribers, followers, and most notably, our patrons. Thanks to Rob Jenkin, Nathan Ebley, Ensign Turtle, and Alex von Hostrin for supporting us so far on this journey. Please subscribe, give a like or a comment, follow us on Twitter, and stay tuned for the next episode. Don't forget, take care of each other.